with an empty scene in Blender. I'm using Blender 2.77. You'll notice that I do have the Pi menu and the dynamic spacebar add-ons enabled. However, they're not necessary to complete this tutorial. You'll also want to make sure that your Math Functions add-on is enabled. So we'll start here by going to Add Mesh and down to the Math Function and we'll add a regular solid. All right. By default, on your screen, you may see a tetrahedron. We can just come over here, over to the left-hand side under Source, and change it to the dodecahedron. All right, so you should see this. Let's go into Edit Mode, and you'll notice these crossing lines along each one of the N-GON faces. We'll switch to Edge Mode, tap the X key to bring up our Delete panel, and we'll choose Limited Dissolve and that will eliminate those crossing edges. Okay. Let's switch to face mode. Hold down Alt on the keyboard and tap the P key to utilize the poke tool. And that'll give us this star-like pattern of edges on each of the Engon faces. From here, we can go back to edge mode, select one of the original edges, Hold on Shift on the keyboard, tap G to bring up our Select Similar panel. And we'll select by length, and that'll grab all of the original edges. Tap X on the keyboard one more time, and this time we'll dissolve edges. And that'll leave us with this object. Make sure you're in edge mode. Tap A on the keyboard to select all. Hold on control and tap the B key to engage the bevel tool. You can pull the bevel out a little bit. Tap the left mouse button to disengage. And then over here on the left hand side, you'll notice the bevel panel has popped up. In the amount parameter, we'll just go ahead and type in 0.05. And that's about the size of the bevel we want. Now you'll notice that it looks like we have the beveled faces selected already. However, we're still in edge mode. So just switch over to face mode. And you'll notice now the faces are indeed selected. So we could hold down control and tap the I key to invert that selection. Tap X again and delete by faces, and that'll give us this object. Now we're going to go back down to edge mode, and we'll select one of these long arms emanating from the central pentagons on this object, and we'll actually hold shift and select the other edge. And then we'll hold shift and bring up select similar again by tapping G on the keyboard, and we'll select by length, and that should grab all of these edges around the object. Over on the left hand side, we'll go ahead and use the subdivide tool, and we'll give it a number of cuts. We'll give it five. Okay. Now we'll switch back to face mode. Select one of the pentangular pentagonal faces in the middle here, and then uh, Shift G again to bring up Select Similar, and we'll select by polygon sides. So you should have something like this. All right. Now we'll come down here to the bottom panel, and we'll change our pivot center to use individual origins. And then we'll also change our uh, transform orientation to normal. Okay. And then lastly, over here, we'll enable our proportional editing tool. Now, 
your proportional editing tool will make it will make a difference the distance of the object uh, in, in in the viewport. So, uh, in order to use the same parameters that I'll be using here, uh, you might want to uh, just make sure that uh, your viewport is about the same distance from the object that I have here. Okay. So now, with proportional editing enabled, we'll go ahead and tap R on the keyboard to engage our rotation tool. Tap Z twice to rotate on the face normal of all of the selections that we have. And then using our mouse wheel, we'll reduce the amount of our proportional size and we'll go down to about 0 0.47. Okay. Then holding control on the keyboard, we'll go ahead and rotate this um, in a positive direction. We'll rotate this to 45 degrees along the Z normal. And we'll release by tapping our left mouse button. Okay, so that'll leave us with this. Now we'll go down to the bottom and we'll change the pivot point once again to use the median point. And we'll tap S on the keyboard to engage our scale tool. And we'll use the mouse wheel to change the proportional size to about 0.51. Hold control and we'll scale it in to about 0 0.6. Tap the left mouse button to disengage and you should see the vector coordinates over here on your left hand side should read 0 0.6. All right. So now, now that we have this uh, selection of these midpoints here, we'll hold control on the keyboard tap the plus sign on our number pad and that'll grill the selection once and then while we're holding control we'll tap I to invert that face selection. Now we'll come down here to the bottom for this procedure we'll disable proportional editing. All right, Make sure our pivot point uh, centers are using individual origins and then we'll tap R on the keyboard to bring up the rotation tool. Z twice to engage it on each individual origin. And then we'll hold control while we rotate this selection. And we'll rotate it to negative 60 along the Z normal. And tap the left key to release. And again, over on the left-hand side under angle, you should see negative 60 degrees. All right, and that'll leave us with this object here. Now we can go into our, uh, our edge mode at this point. Tap A to deselect everything. And we'll select two of the long edges once again along the star shapes here in the center of the object. And then we'll shift G to bring up select similar and again we'll grab them by length. And then over here uh, we'll, on the left hand side we'll click subdivide and change the number of cuts to three. Okay. Now we'll switch over to face mode and we'll select one of the pentagonal faces in the center. Shift G again, and this time we'll select by polygon sides to grab them all around the object. And then we'll go down here and we'll enable proportional editing once again. All right, we'll tap R on the keyboard, and then we'll tap Z twice. And then using the mouse wheel, 
we'll change the uh, proportional size. We'll change it down to about 0 0.24. All right, and then we'll uh, hold Control while we rotate. And let's rotate in a positive direction to about 45 degrees again. Okay. And that'll give us this twisted result. Now, optionally here, you could um, switch to median and scale these in once one more time, uh, just slightly if you don't like the rounded look of the center. But in this case, I'm going to leave it. All right. So now I'll change my uh, pivot point once again to median. And I'll select one of the triangles here on the ends. Shift G, polygon sides. And then I'm going to, what, what we're going to do now is we're going to shrink it down just a little bit here, um, just so that these, these points aren't quite as long. All right, so we'll tap S on the keyboard for the scale tool. And we'll use the mouse wheel again, and we'll scale it up to, oh, I don't know, perhaps 0 0.68. And uh, let's hold control again while we scale. Let's see what we get here. OK. I'm just going to scale it in probably to 0 0.8. And again, just uh, tap my left mouse button to engage that. OK. Now that's optional as well. If you like it, if you like these edges longer, then you could uh, um, you could just uh, not do that that part of it, um, but all right. So now what I'll do here is I think that these center points now need to be adjusted. So I'll select one, bring up the select similar again, polygon sides, and. Um, Tap S on the keyboard, and I'll reduce down to about 0. Point, oh, I don't know, 0. Uh, 0.26. And I'll just bring these in a little bit. And I'm holding down Control again, I'll bring them into about 0. 0.7. So this is our object so far. Now, <clears throat> one thing I've noticed here is that due to the proportional editing, we have some, uh, some sloppy edges along the object here. So I'm going to go out to object level. I'm going to go to my modifiers. And I'm going to engage corrective smooth. And I'm going to tick only smooth. And um, I'm going to reduce the repeat factor to 1. And I'm going to reduce the factor itself down to maybe 0 0.1. And that'll smooth out and correct some of the uh, sloppy edges that were produced here by the proportional editing tool. I wish Blender had a soft selection to uh, get more accurate results with the proportional editing. Um, proportional editing seems to rely heavily on your screen space and, and viewpoint instead of the uh, object, uh, the object's uh, own normals and uh, vertices. Anyway. Um, and that's a little bit better result than uh, than we had before. OK, so I'm just going to apply that at this point and go ahead and bring up the uh, 
solidify tool and I'll give this a pretty good thickness and um, on here I'm going to type in a value maybe 0 0.05 Actually, I'd like to go a little bit, a little bit more than that. So, 0 0.07 looks good. And there's no intersections. Okay. And now, after that, I'll go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier, and I'll give it uh, three subdivisions. But I'd like to go back down here with the solidify and maybe give some crease to the inner amount and as well as the outer amount. And the amount of crease that you're giving here is entirely up to you, visually what you prefer. Personally, I, I like it maybe about uh, 0 0.5 for both the... Uh, inner and outer amounts. Okay. And this is our object. Um, this tutorial is based on a 3ds Max tutorial that I've released maybe, I don't know, three weeks ago. Um, the only difference here, again, is the um, is Blender does not have a soft selection and the proportional editing works. Um, I hate to say not as accurately, um, but it, it does work differently and uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to get the exact same result as I had gotten in the 3ds Max tutorial. However, this is very, very close to uh, what, what we've achieved there. And just to finish it off, I'll uh, put a matte cap on it um, and then switch to smooth shading. And this is the object. Um, thank you once again for your support. I'll see you soon.